Okay, hi there. Welcome to the second video in our look at the UK energy market. Uh, in the first video, we, we took an overview of the market, thinking about the market structure, thinking about supply and demand factors for gas, particularly in the UK, and uh, taking a look at the reasons why there's been a surge in the price of gas, both internationally and increasingly domestically. This chart shows the monthly average gas price uh, based on day ahead base load contracts in the UK from 2015 all the way through to 2022 and this huge rise in the price of gas, particularly in the second half of 2021. Well, Ofgem, the uh, industry regulator, announced last week uh, an increase, a significant increase in the, the energy price cap. This is the cap that suppliers uh, can charge, the maximum price they can charge per unit of energy, per kilowatt of energy. Huge rise in the price cap, something like a uh, 54% increase from £1,277 to just under £2,000. Uh, and in fact, some estimates think that the next price cap announcement in six months' time could actually be even higher than that, above two and a half, perhaps £2,500. Much depends, of course, on what happens to the world or the European price of gas and also the UK price. You can see, for example, that the wholesale price is now built into that price cap, £1,000 Per household and also the network costs have gone up quite a bit as well the main driver of that is the fact that the the big energy companies have been having to take on uh, supply of last resort functions as uh, tens of smaller energy companies have gone bust the likes of bulb energy and, and cng and they're allowed to make a claim for additional costs that they incur uh, as they take over you know, hundreds of thousands of customers. So those network costs have gone up as well. But the price cap is now just under £2,000. This is a significant, a huge factor affecting the UK economy. One aspect will be, is scheduled to be an increase in fuel poverty. Now, this is a key concept that I think students could be aware of. Fuel poverty is also known as fuel stress. And it happens when after spending the required amount to heat their home, a household, a family, if you like, is left with a residual income below the official poverty line, which I think is 60% of median income adjusted, of course, for household size. Now, there's no doubt about it that this increase in the energy price cap to just under £2,000 is going to cause significant increases in fuel poverty. By some estimates, over 2 million extra people uh, will have to, well, 2 million extra households, sorry, will face fuel poverty. This raises an important question. What can, what could, what should the government do if, if it wants to intervene in the market to limit the impact of the surge in energy prices? I guess in the short term, uh, we, we, we can look at some of the options. The first one would be to cut or freeze VAT on gas bills. Uh, perhaps uh, have a, a one or two year freeze on VAT. Uh, the, the, the issue there is that VAT is only 5% and it wouldn't actually make fundamentally a big difference. And so to the second point, a freeze the contributions to gas bills from the climate change levies. In other words, hold back on the, the cost, some of the external, externality costs that consumers are paying uh, towards the meeting the government's climate change targets. The government could offer pure cash transfers, the winter cold weather payments poured, made to poorer households. Uh, there's something called the warm homes rebate, which is paid to families on a means-tested benefit a basis. So people on low incomes are more entitled to those rebates. And many people have been arguing that the government should do more to increase the targeted help and support for families on low incomes, often bigger families who have huge gas and electricity bills. Another option uh, is the, the state-backed loans to energy companies to help absorb their higher costs. Those loans can be paid back when prices are lower and profits are higher. The actual preferred in, introduced policy from Rishi Sunak is that uh, they've introduced a, a, a £200 rebate or £200 off people's electricity bills. It's going to cost about five and a half billion pounds. Uh, this is only this is only going to kick in, by the way, in October 2022. Uh, the the price cap increases in April, uh, and basically you get a 200 pound energy bill rebate, so your bill comes down by 200 pounds. But essentially, it's a loan to customers, 
and the Chancellor is aiming to recoup, to reclaim the money by adding, I think, uh, 40 or £50, pounds, maybe, I think it might be £40, pounds, to uh, electricity bills for each of the next five years from 2023. So people's bills will come down by £200 this year, but they'll have to pay fifty pounds, sorry, £40 pounds, uh, for five years to repay those loans. And a lot of people are not particularly happy about that. It's a kind of quite a convoluted where many people don't want to take out a loan to have to pay energy bills in the future. I guess if you're evaluating this issue, you'd, you'd be thinking about what, you know, what are some of the long-term strategies. Undoubtedly, in the short term, there's going to be a lot of pain, a lot of economic damage. What can you do in the long term to make things better? Well, we've got to reduce energy demand. And one of the ways you do that is by investment to improve energy efficiency in homes and buildings and schools and hospitals. Um, by some estimates, more than 16 million UK home, homes are not energy efficient. They don't have sufficient cavity wall insulation. They don't have enough uh, loft insulation, for example. So you could well decide to increase the funding or the incentives for households to insulate their homes to bring energy bills down. Secondly, of course, you want to accelerate the shift towards renewable energy, away from gas, away from coal and oil, towards solar, other forms of renewable energy, to reduce that uh, high dependence on gas. Uh, another option, long term, which is quite important, is you need more gas storage capacity. You see, the UK has limited capacity to store gas, either liquefied natural gas or gas coming through the connector pipes. And if you had bigger storage capacity, you could be buying gas when the price was low, storing it. Yes, there's a cost, but that would allow you to almost like a run a buffer stock of gas. So the economy will be less susceptible and less impacted by, by severe short term price volatility. And another Policy, I suppose it's linked a little bit to point two, is to, to try and shift towards installing electric heat pumps in houses and buildings and, and things like schools, again, to reduce dependence on gas. Well, a, a word or two about some of the macro effects. So this is a this is I'm now taking a step back here. This is going to be one of the biggest economic issues of the next six months, 12 months. There's no question about it. The surge in energy prices is causing and will cause a steep increase in the rate of inflation in the UK. Now, this chart comes from the Bank of England's latest inflation report. Uh, there's quite a lot going on in this chart, but notice that the rate of inflation in the UK is forecast to hit 7, 7.5% when that gas price cap surges by 54% in April. So high inflation, way above the 2% target, uh, is is clearly going to be a major economic issue this year. And uh, if wages don't rise in line with prices, uh, that's going to cause a big fall in real income allied to the increase in national insurance, so a big fall in real household disposable incomes. And that's going to put a big squeeze on living standards, which could well impact on the strength of the post-COVID recovery. Uh, I mean, really, really important to look at uh, what's happening to real disposable incomes. This chart here uh, shows what's happened to real post-tax labour income. And you can see that in 2021-22, it's negative. Uh, there's a big squeeze on living standards. And a couple of headlines from the papers. Uh, the I reporting that the cost of living crisis, one extra, extra one million children set to go hungry. This is what I was talking about in the previous video. The increase in energy prices, the increase in fuel bills is causing uh, many families to have to make incredibly difficult choices about whether to go hungry or to feed or to heat their homes. Uh, the number of people using food banks is rising strongly. And this is going to be one of the salient, the biggest issues of the year without question. At the same time, the Financial Times reporting that BP has rejected a call for a windfall tax as their profits hit an eight-year high of, of over $12.8 billion. Chalk and cheese, everybody. These are issues of the day that are linked to what's been happening in the UK energy market. OK, so I hope over the two videos you've got a feel for the industry, some of the supply and demand factors, and also some of the, the micro and macroeconomic implications 
of what's going on. I think this is a key industry to keep an eye out, to honour keep a, a keen uh, in, interest in the news and the newspapers and the TV coverage. And uh, let's see what happens in the months ahead. Thanks for joining in, everybody. Stay safe, stay curious, and hopefully see you sometime soon.